Hey, it's Journey Montana. And you're now watching Crowned on Sarah GTV. Yeah. That's just how the world stands. I guess I'm selfish every now and then. You sin, I sin. You bleed, I bleed. You lose, I lose. I'm human too. Yeah. Have you ever had a job outside of entertainment? This is a good question. Yes, I have had a job. I worked at Chick fil A in 10th grade for a week. And that's the only job I've ever had outside of entertainment, and I was fired. Because I think I had um, choir practice, or like practice for like singing class, and I skipped work. And I was just like, they're gonna fire me, and they were like, you're fired, so yeah. <laughs> what is one thing this industry has taught you about yourself? That I'm tougher than I realize, uh, definitely. And that nobody cares, keep working. Don't care, don't care, still don't care. I don't care. That's something I tell myself like every day. <laughs> How do you get over someone? See, my toxic side would immediately be like get under somebody else. I just took a trip with your man's now you weeping. I just hit a lick on the bitch who was creeping. But you know, now I'm gonna say meditate. Talk to God about it. <laughs> I've changed. I've evolved. Who is your number one supporter and what can you do to better support them. My number one supporter is my mom. Um, what can I do better to support her? Maybe make her some 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 salad and some soups like every Friday and do movie night and you know spend quality time together and you know just listen. I feel like I have a listening problem sometimes. Just in life. I feel like there's people that are like listeners and then there's people who are like talkers and I feel like I'm self-aware enough to say that I I'm not necessarily a listener, and I definitely want to work on that. So I would say better support, my number one supporter, my mother, but just listening more and being less of a talker, more of a listener. Yeah. What memory instantly makes you smile? Oh, probably like any, because I have two nephews. So any memory, like when I see them for the first time after a long time, because they always like, they're like, Auntie Journey, and just like run to me and like just show me love. So that, that instantly makes me smile, for sure, my babies. When it's all said and done, how do you want to be remembered? Oh, that's such a beautiful question. I want to be remembered as somebody that said the things that everybody is not comfortable enough or, you know, evolved enough or even self-aware enough to say. You know, just help people find and understand things about themselves that they didn't necessarily understand before and like tap into emotions that they haven't been tapped into before. I kind of just want to be known for raising people's chakras, like your, your mind and your spirit, just like bringing you to a different level. Things like this where I'm just talking or like my music or my writing, speaking, known for my words, definitely remembered for my words. Okay. What is one bad decision you learn the most from? Huh. Do I even make bad decisions? Stop the cap. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Trusting a man at this point, like, Trusting these dudes, I'm telling you, like that was probably because that's how the song Bad Decisions was made. If you don't know, I have a song that I just dropped called Bad Decisions. Making bad decisions, fucking on average woman, said you wouldn't do it and you did it. And it was made about a guy's bad decisions. And I feel like my bad decision was trusting that so that spoken of man, the man I'm speaking of. But yeah. Yeah, definitely that, and like being too vulnerable and letting things be one-sided, like, and not standing up for myself. That was a bad decision that I learned the most from because, you know, even if you look at like my discography, I say that word wrong every time, but even if you look at it, my old music is, you know, it's very much soft girl, it's very much sweet, it's very much like, and I feel like I'm a whole different person. Yeah, I would say trusting without reason to. <laughs> is revenge always sweet? I feel like, yeah, it is. <laughs> like the sweetness is it's like bittersweet and it doesn't really last long like I always notice whenever I get revenge or I like get even because I'm very much that girl I do that in every capacity that I can like 
you know, when it comes to texting back, if you don't text me back for a day, I'm not texting you back for a week. Or like, you know, just little things like that, like where it's like revenge or as far as, you know, other ways, but like, It'll be sweet, like in the moment. Like, like for example, with the texting, they could not text you back for a day, you don't text them back for a week, and it'll be like, yeah, you're on deliver. And then when you finally text them back, they never respond to you again. It's like, dang, I didn't think about that, you know? So it's sweet briefly, like in the moment, for a second, but not, mm -mm, not really, not, not in the long term. What was the last goal you accomplished, and why was that important to you? Oh, there's been so many goals accomplished this like past few weeks, I'm not even gonna lie. I know numbers is, is, there's two things, but Bad Decisions just hit 500K on Apple Music. Insane, um, I've never had a song do that much. Oh, 500K in one month. That was exciting, and I feel like we're definitely on a roll to a million, so that was like a big thing that I accomplished, and it was just, it was, re it was really important because it's just re little, little things like reassurance like that. Because you know, you'll have phases, like it'll be like the song I dropped three songs ago was like my best doing song and then like it kind of was low and then it went back high again. It's like, you know, ups and downs, it was felt good. And then um, I just filmed a short film with my friend in Atlanta. Shout out to Young and with a Cannon. It was important to me because, you know, we're all up and coming and we're all like chasing our goals and, and sacrificing a lot. and. He brought together a whole bunch of different influencers and it was just really nice to see everybody come together with nothing. It wasn't really like an exchange. It was just like, oh, we're all just gonna support this and come together. And it was really, it was really, really nice because things can be super transactional and that it wasn't a transactional thing. Okay. How do you feel the night before a big release? I'm usually very excited and like, Nervous, almost like I'm about to go on stage. Like I'm like, okay, 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 okay. Sometimes, like in the beginning when I first started, I used to be like, no, just stop it, no, let's not put it out. I'm freaking out. Like I used to just be like, it was almost like you're about to dive into a pool and then you like back up. You're like, wait, wait, wait. But now because I've just gotten into the habit of just like jumping off the cliff, that's kind of how I think of it. It's like an adrenaline rush. Now I feel really like excited and like a little bit anxious and like you know you're kind of just putting yourself out there and like. Now everybody can see you. I think of it like stripping naked on stage, like dropping music or like putting out <laughs> songs and stuff, like, cause it's just so vulnerable. Like I always feel naked, especially if it's like a really transparent song and I'm saying things that like, I really, really mean. I always feel naked, like I'm like, oh my gosh. <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> mm. We can look forward to lots of creative things, lots of content, um, EP 2023, and just the takeover. Are you guys ready? I don't think y'all are ready, but if you're not ready, get ready and then stay ready. What's up, it's Journey Montana. I just wrapped up. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe to Sarah GTV.